Well, this interview just dropped, and we're going to talk about this, and it has to do with the way these UAPs and UFOs just zoom fly through the sky. It's it's really amazing because imagine you're a fighter pilot, right? And you're soaring through the skies in your jet. You're right off the coast of California when suddenly your radar pings and it's something defying every law of physics that we are familiar with. There's no wings on this thing. There's no exhaust, no heat signature. And it's accelerating like it's late for a meeting on the other side of the cosmos, like it's out of there. I mean, it sounds like science fiction, right? Well, today we're going to dive behind the real science behind this, like what is going on. So we're going to talk about Dr. Kevin Newth's recent interview on WAMC Radio. Now, Dr. Newth is a physicist, and I'll tell you exactly Uh, He does research in information physics, foundations of quantum mechanics, and Bayesian analysis. So uh, this is the real deal. He is a former NASA scientist, and he breaks down the leaked Navy footage from encounters that have the scientific community buzzing. Like, what is this thing? What is going on? So we're going to go into that. By the way... Thanks for being here. Happy New Year. If you're new to my channel, I'm Dr. Andrea O'Connor. And boy, did I trigger some people on my last video. Uh, It's either making me think, well, I'm going to keep politics completely out of it, or I was just trying to be neutral. So that was interesting. Uh, Moving forward, leave a comment below. Do you like to talk about like what's going on in the world with politics? Because everything is connected to everything in a manner of speaking. But boy, did I trigger some people. It was interesting. So, okay, we're going to connect this to all true things. We're going to keep it grounded with facts. So first, though, a quick rewind to the catalyst of all this. In the 2004 USS Nimitz incident, yeah, that's right, Commander David Fravor, a seasoned Top Gun instructor, remember this? He spots this this white tic-tac-shaped object hovering over the ocean. We've all seen the videos by now. Uh, churning the water below, like kind of like an invisible blender, right? There's no visible propulsion, no heat signature, and he dives in for a closer look. And this thing mirrors his every move before zipping off that would spin uh, or turn a human pilot into jelly. Yeah. Later, we see leaked videos, the FLIR videos, the gimbal, the go fast captured by Navy pilots that show similar anomalies to this Tic Tac. And you know what? These aren't these grainy backyard cameras. No, they are from multi-million dollar military sensors. So some things that we can't see down here with the naked eye, they are catching up there in the skies. The Pentagon confirmed their authenticity in 2020, but the explanations of what these are? Crickets, right? Yeah. Yeah. So now we have Dr. Kevin Newth. He was just, uh, was it yesterday, January 7th, right? 2026, uh, interviewed on WAMC. He dissects these videos with a precision of like a laser. So he points out that these objects exhibit accelerations from 100 Gs to 1,000 Gs. Yeah. So for context... I mean, that's like your car going from zero to 60, like in a blink. Unimaginable, right? But, you know, scale that up to these type of forces could crumple steel. Yeah. But there's no sonic booms being heard. Now, I've talked about that where people are hearing booms and explosions in their neighborhood. And I keep wondering, is that craft you know, exceeding the um, the sound barrier, and then you hear that boom. But apparently there's no sonic boom with these type of craft. Yeah. Um, there's also no atmospheric friction. So when they reach these really high speeds, they're not becoming, you know, that friction. It's not, they're not becoming fireballs. So now Dr. Newth says it's it's as if these craft are bending space itself. Interesting, right? So now this echoes, he had a paper, a 2019 paper in Entropy titled Estimating Flight Characteristics of Anomalous Unidentified Aerial Vehicles. And he crunched the numbers here. So for example, in the Nimitz case, the tic-tac dropped from 28,000 feet to sea level 
in under a second. Yeah, that's an acceleration of about 5,000 Gs. Yeah. A standard fighter, the fighter jet maxes at 9 Gs, right? I think of, I always think of the Top Gun movie when he was like trying to get to 10 Gs and then he, he went past that uh, before pilots black out typically. So cleverly, Dr. Newth compares it to relativity. At those speeds, time dilation kicks in, making interstellar jaunts feasible without aging a day. Right. But Dr. Newth doesn't stop at just math. He ties this to his hands-on work. So in 2021, though often referenced in his talks at the... um, Uh, 2022 analysis phase, Dr. Newth joined UAPX, a scientific team founded by the Nimitz witnesses. Like uh, we had radar operator Kevin Day and Gary Voorhees. They weren't content with hearsay though, right? They mounted a week-long expedition to Catalina Island, the hotspot of 2004 encounters. Now, if you've ever been to San Diego and you look across the water and you kind of see this um, well, no, was I in San Diego or was I in Newport Beach? It might have been Newport Beach. And you see this hazy island out in the distance. Uh, you can kind of make it out, but there's always some cloud covering around it. Really hard to see kind of the skies around that air. Yeah, UAP hotspot. So a team of physicists, veterans, and filmmakers, yes, it became a documentary, a tear in the sky, or I'm sorry, a tear in the sky. They set up on rooftops and in a rugged landover, dubbed the Osiris, they deployed FLIR or FLIR thermal cameras, night vision goggles, radiation detectors, and AI triggered video systems. Over 600 hours of infrared footage, 55 hours of radiation data, and an hour of triggered videos. What did they find? Well, most of the anomalies had prosaic explanations. So uh, like the International Space Station masquerading as a UAP, because some people see that (laughs) as a glimmer of light up in the sky, Um, but it's identified by by its 110 meter size and 6,000 millisecond velocity via pixel analysis. But one stands out at 4 a.m., On July 16th, a dark spot appears in the visible near-infrared camera, dotted with white specks coinciding with a radiation spike, potentially from ionizing particles. Dr. Newth's team ruled out like insects, bugs, water uh, water droplets, camera glitches, all those things through lab tests, and they couldn't pin down what is this. And he says science thrives on these ambiguities. Yeah. Uh, This expedition detailed in a 2023 paper echoes the Navy footage. Objects that defy easy labels, possibly physical, possibly advanced. So now let's connect the dots now to the other true stories, right? Because UAPs aren't a 21st century fad. Dr. Newth often references the 1986 Japan Airlines flight, 1628 over Alaska. Captain Tarachi spotted a walnut-shaped craft the size, get this, of a football stadium. Doesn't that sound familiar? The triangle-shaped craft that we saw, or I didn't see it that night, but that were here in Phoenix, in the Phoenix lights, everyone said it was large as a um, you know, the football field. So here we have a walnut-sized craft, the shape of a football stadium, four times a 747's width. I mean, wrap your mind around that. It's crazy. It paced the plane for 45 minutes, emitting heat that warmed the cockpit. How crazy is that, right? Yeah. Radar data, partially seized by U.S. authorities, showed jumps implying 10,000 G acceleration and speeds up to 250,000 miles per hour. That's like going to the moon in an hour territory, Dr. Newth calculates. So no explosions on stops, no drag, just poof, it's gone. Tarachi, that pilot, his career suffered from reporting what he saw then. 
But the data still holds up, especially now that so many people since 1986 have been seeing these large craft in the sky. Then, of course, there's that nuclear thread, right? A recurring motif in Dr. Newth's analysis. From the 1967 Maelstrom Air Force Base incident where UFOs allegedly shut down 10 ICBMs, yeah, to statistical spikes in sightings at nuclear sites since the 1940s. Dr. Newth cites Robert Hastings' research. UAPs hover over silos sometimes disabling warheads. Mm -hmm. It's like they are monitoring our deadliest toys. This is what he said. He was also on the podcast, Danny Jones. I don't know if you've watched that podcast. Every I think it's like every now and then he has the most interesting guests. And sometimes I'm just like, how can they be talking about this for two hours and just be making it up? I don't know. I I believe most of them, to be honest. I try to keep an open mind, as I always do. But uh, as what occurred on the Danny Jones podcast, Dr. Newth links this to broader patterns. UAPs, for example, at construction sites, as if they're scouting out our tech evolution. Like, what are we able to do now? And don't forget the 1951 Bethune encounter. A U.S. Navy flight spots glowing orbs over the Atlantic, pacing their plane right? They tend to do this. They're pacing the planes. There was plasma-like lights, but no structure. Early hints of the same phenomena. And I tell you what, when people were seeing that craft with the Phoenix lights, when they said that they saw these amber lights underneath it, they said it was the most unusual lights they'd ever seen, almost like plasma. That's a recurring theme as well. So like, why does this matter? Why does this matter to you, right? Well, because it's not about belief, It's about inquiry. It's about questioning. We have to continue to question. Even Dr. Newth slams the stigma. In a 2024 talk, he said science mishandles anomalies by ignoring them, right? He's pushing for multidisciplinary studies from warp drives to quantum tunneling for those explanations of instant jumps. So if these are advanced craft, They solve energy puzzles that we haven't figured out yet, right? We're all worried about green energy and a clean earth. And it's like, these things have been solved if we could only reverse engineer or unlock this tech. And maybe our military is already doing that, right? You know, and think about it too. You know, these things are going using hundreds of megawatts of luminosity without meltdown. Or as Dr. Newth speculates, The ETs from ocean worlds, or like now we're seeing USOs, are shielded from radiation, and they're just exploring our seas. So these unidentified submerged objects, like those in Admiral Tim Gallaudet's papers, they're literally, maybe they're mapping the seas, maybe they're they have underground bases in the oceans, and maybe that's why that we see them diving into the oceans there. Yeah, there's a lot of talk about that. But here's the twist. Are we the aliens in our own story? Ancient artifacts like Egypt's granite vases show sub-millimeter precision. Are they using copper chisels? I mean, that's kind of doubtful. But is there lost technology, like lost to the dust in the wind there? For example, like Roman concrete, how did they make that? Is that technology lost? This reminds us that knowledge ebbs and flows. Like we think we're at the height of knowledge. You know, maybe there was some ancient knowledge that we have lost. I mean, right now we have computers and all that. And I don't know if they have the same type of technology we have now, but they did have something back then that built the pyramids. I mean, if you think about it, right? So, you know, are UAPs ultra terrestrials? Are they part of a hidden earth civilization, like from under the water that are keeping those ancient secrets? Or are they time travelers, which I've talked about before? But no matter whichever theory it is, I also believe that they could be beings from another dimension or another galaxy. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Of course. So Dr. New, uh, Dr. Newth's interview isn't just a revelation. It's, it's like a call to arms for curiosity. And that is why I make videos like this. 
I want to discuss them. I am so curious about what is going on with this, just like I'm curious, cur- very curious about uh, the, um, the world of the supernatural, right? And as he puts it, we're dangerously ignorant about what's going on. So this literally could affect not even just like our national security, but our world security, or maybe it's not a security issue. Again, that's why I'm so curious. So whether Navy footage heralds contact or discovers clever drones that you know has different technology than ours, like maybe they're just this other intelligence is sending drones to us, the physics of them, though, demands attention. So what's your tick what is your take on all this? What is your take on all the tic tac math or really what Dr. Newth is talking about? I do find it fascinating. And for those of you that are still here on my last video that I triggered everyone, leave a comment below if like you just want to talk about all these curious stuff and leave the politics out of it. But eventually I think as much as the Pentagon and the government knows, it is going to get political. It just is. Because I feel like there's a chess game going on right now with the big players, the big leaders in the world. You're seeing it play out right now. And I think it's important to talk about. Okay. Thanks for being here. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.